Hi guys, Chu here from Prodons. I've actually been requested to do a video on how to do PPK post-processing. So we've decided to go out and get some data just to demonstrate how this is done. So what we've done is we've uh, flown two missions. One is the typical setup with the DRTK2 placed on a known point and then the drone flying with RTK positioning on all the time. The other is with the drone flying without any RTK positioning and a third-party base station placed on a known point recording data. So we've taken the base station data back as well and then we've actually done some PPK work to do the position correction and we've actually reproduced the Renex data of the base station with its known coordinates. So yeah, let's dive in. So what you see here is a typical uh, file folder structure after your flight mission. You've got your uh, calibration data, IMU data, your LIDAR, which is this LDR file. You have your RTK, which is the GPS antenna data. And you've got your RGB images, which were captured during the flight. So one thing if you notice, the RTB file is very small. So that's because during this mission, for this one, I've actually turned off the DRTK2 and I've turned off RTK positioning for the drone. What this means is this drone was flying with a single precision GPS at the time. But we've recorded all that and I've actually put a third party base station. Now what I've done is I've taken this uh, third party base station raw file. I've PPK that versus the local core station to get the position. And I have reproduced a Renex file with the known position placed inside. So this is this observation file. Now all you have to do is just rename it. Let's put it inside this folder. So it has a very odd name. So all we have to do is just take the mission name and paste it here. All right. So now you should join the other files at the top. So you have everything here and now an OBS file. Okay, so I've created two separate projects just to show you what happens when the data isn't good. So there are cases where the Rhinex data or your source data won't give an RTK fake of sufficient quality, which in this case, Terra will reject, right? I'm going to show you what it's like. If you take this piece of data, if you go into reconstruction, uh, if you go to start processing, right? It's going to take a moment, but somewhere around the 12% mark, it's going to throw an error. Right. So you can see it's bad. So this is, if you have no time overlap, you're going to get this error. Okay. Now, another possible error that you're going to get is POS data not available. That basically means the data quality is not up to scratch. That one is basically saying that you've probably only got RTK float, best case. So in that case, it hasn't got it strong enough of the solution data to recreate the data generated. Now, I'm going to show you one with a good set of data. All right. So it will seem exactly like the same, right? If you'll set the uh, coordinate systems as usual, All right? Turn on the cleanup and then just let it process. So what happens is it's actually reprocessing the uh, trajectory files. Um, it's taking the Renex observation file data together with the RTK data of the drone to process. What is happening is that the software then based on the output of this trajectory data, then it will recreate the LiDAR data. So you can see this one is progressing smoothly. It's 83% now. Okay, so the reconstruction is complete. All right. So if you take this and I have another data set which I flew with the DRTK2, it's virtually identical. So this one I flew with the DRTK2 and yeah, you've got exactly the same quality of data. Now, just to show you that the data from the drone can be used to do a quick process. So I have renamed 
the RTK file in the project folder into an OBS file. I've used RTK convert and I've converted the RTCM data into a Renex file. And I've taken my base data as a source and I've actually done RTK post-processing. So you can see I've actually gotten the RTK to fix over the entire flight, which includes the calibration path, uh, the moving from the takeoff point to the calibration point throughout the entire flight mission and back again. So the red dots are poor quality data, but that is of no matter because it's past where we want the data anyway. As you can see, we can actually do a quick uh, data quality check for the RTK data if you are worried about a post-processing uh, issue. The final question will always be how accurate is it? Does it work? Is it even in the same ballpark? Uh, I have two sets of data. One is with the DRTK2, one is without. So the quick one would be if we were to zoom in roughly, yeah. Right. So if you see, this is without the DRTK2 and this is with the DRTK2. You can see it's roughly the same position. How accurate is it? Now let's uh, change it to intensity. So one thing about the L1 is that the RGB colorization isn't so good. So um, it's more accurate if you were to check positions by using intensity. This is the corner here, roughly here to here is about half a meter. Whereas if you look at the data without the DRTK2, it also about one meter and a bit. But what you can see is that you can do PPK. Uh, that's the most important part. PPK can be done. We'll be doing some accuracy analysis a little bit more in depth later because uh, we will have some actual LiDAR jobs coming up and stuff like that to do benchmarking. But relatively, if we use this basketball court as comparison, since the width of a basketball court is uh, more or less standardized, it's 15 meters. Yeah. Right. So yeah, you can do PPK. And that's how you do it. So basically, you just need the OBS file or the raw GPS data and chuck it in and you'll get it processed. Although this is the end of the video, I'd like to highlight also that you can do the same with the DRTK2. So assuming if halfway through the flight, you have a patches of data where the drone lost connection with the remote, so it will be having single precision. What you can do is take the DRTK2, connect it to the computer, and download the relevant DAT files, which are the files with all the stored RTCM data that is inside the DRTK2. And you can put them in the folder as well and do the same renaming process, .dat, leaving the .dat behind. It will then process in exactly the same way. The advantage of having the DRTK2 is still not lost for this kind of work. So I thank you very much for spending your time to watch this video. If you like what you see, please do like and subscribe. If you have any questions, just comment below. And as always, thank you and fly safe.